uh, and pretending to be government agents, etc. And one of these accounts sort of set off this idea that um, there was imminently going to be an arrest of Hillary Clinton and mm-hmm. dozens, if not hundreds, of co-conspirators. And this sort of snowballed into an idea that she'd been running a sort of satanic paedophile ring, you know, relying on the very, very small sort of kernel of truth of she knew Epstein. Of course, so did Donald Trump. And the idea was that because she had agents all over the place, etc., Donald Trump was having to play this very clever double game, sort of shadow game. But it it snowballed beyond that until quite well, quickly they were supposedly sacrificing children. They had hundreds of thousands of children in underground tunnels. It was global. For those who don't know too much about QAnon, uh, just give us a bit more of a sort of potted idea of what exactly it is. It, it started as this quite targeted conspiracy theory in about 2017 on uh, a bulletin board called 4chan where everyone posts anonymously and it's, to be honest, something of a cesspit. Um, And people were kind of half playing uh, and pretending to be government agents, etc. And one of these accounts sort of set off this idea that um, there was imminently going to be an arrest of Hillary Clinton and Mm -hmm. dozens, if not hundreds, of co-conspirators. And this sort of snowballed into an idea that she'd been running a sort of satanic paedophile ring, you know, relying on the very, very small sort of kernel of truth of she knew Epstein. Of course, so did Donald Trump. And the idea was that because she had agents all over the place, etc., Donald Trump was having to play this very clever double game, sort of shadow game. But it it snowballed beyond that until quite quickly they were supposedly sacrificing children. They had hundreds of thousands of children in underground tunnels. It was global. But but this also went from I mean this went from a sort of like mad game played online to being a sort of a a thing that mad people thought to having real world impact on American politics, right? American and global politics. It's tell us more about that. Because it doesn't really have one person directing it, saying this is part of it and this isn't, it, especially during lockdown, has pulled in lots of other bits of conspiracies. It's pulled in the idea that Bill Gates is engaged in population control, that the World Economic Forum that does the Davos Summit, Mm -hmm. um, its chief exec put out an ill-titled book called The Great Reset, uh, which got jumped in. So that's part of it now. 5G's part of it. And so it's pulled in what used to be quite disparate conspiracy groups. But Donald Trump's pretty much embraced it. He mm-hmm. walks out on stage to the QAnon theme music now. He he uses phrases that they like. Um, but Germany had a violent coup attempt uh, that was thwarted last December. Hundreds of people arrested. That actually had its roots in QAnon. You've got believers here... Um, You've got believers in Australia and New Mm -hmm. Zealand. It's been connected to mass shootings actually all over the world, particularly America, but Australia. And even there's some connections to uh, a um, a mass killing in the UK. And And those are extremely rare. And, of course, the storming of the Capitol. um, I mean, absolutely infamously. That, That was the moment where... I mean, QAnon might have started on this kind of obscure board would not be a global problem if it hadn't been on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube for unchallenged for about three or four years. So to ask a perhaps dangerous question before we get into precisely how the the spread has happened and why and so on, and I'm going to say this very carefully, is there anything in it? Like, (laughs) is there the kernel of something there that although flawed and mad... This is a rational, rational, understandable way to respond to stuff that has changed lately. Or would you say, no, this is just grade up lunacy? I think I think it's difficult if you ever just totally dismiss something as lunacy, as it implies that no sane person could get pulled into it. Yep. Clever people are just as susceptible to conspiracy theories as idiots. They they're not just for right wing or left wing people. And yes, centrists can get conspiratorial too a lot of it is bonkers it's chemtrails type stuff it's based on things like misunderstanding fbi statistics so fbi has six hundred thousand missing children a year so they have well where are all these kids yeah and the answer is most of them turn up within 12 hours yeah you know it's there's 
all sorts of things like that. But there are little tiny threads of it that get people in. You know, is it stupid to think that a major institution could cover up child abuse? Catholic Church, mm-hmm. Irish Laundry, you know, you name it. There's evidence of these things. So it is daft like, mm-hmm. and it pulls in all sorts But it also, because it's got so many different aspects to it, it's got vaccines, it's got lockdown, it's got 5G, it's got 15-minute cities now. Yeah. People get pulled in by the bit they find plausible. You end up getting to a point where you believe thousands of people in power are covering up something bad. And if you think they'll do it for one thing, is it silly to think they'll do it for another as well? And so you kind of self-radicalise. Well, let's talk a bit about how that's happened and how it's spread in those kind of ways. Uh, Tell me about how it spread pre-pandemic and then the impact of the pandemic on on further spread. So these things get dangerous when they break out of where, where they start. I kind of call 4chan like the equivalent of a viral reservoir. 4chan, the, the message board. Yeah, the yeah. message board. You know, not many people are there. If something stays there, who cares? Um, you know, it's a bit like if a new virus sort of emerges and evolves but stays in deep jungle. In the Batcave, yes. Yeah, yeah in the yeah. Batcave, in that yeah. kind of thing. Your danger is when it gets to the city, and that's Facebook and YouTube. And essentially, some early people just started maybe true believers or maybe they were enjoying seeing what people would swallow. Um, they kind of started making YouTube videos about it. And other influencers pretty cynically pivoted because they saw QAnon did numbers. Mm -hmm. And so people would do that. The algorithm ends up recommending it. People then, if you are now a QAnon influencer, you need something new to say every week. And so it helps you to expand the conspiracy to our detail. And so when the pandemic hits then, talk about how this feeds in how how easily this feeds into sort of vaccine skepticism and isolation and so on well if you have a theory that's based on an elite cabal acting against the public interest and the world's elite suddenly introduced the tightest restrictions in living memory you know it was illegal to leave your home without a good reason Mm -hmm. you know that's it's bonkers it's really strange that that was reality three years ago it's not hard to fit in those restrictions to the nefarious plot. You know, they're testing what you'll put up with. They're using this as a cover to move the children Mm there. And also, people were stressed. People were online more. We've we've had a text while we're talking, uh, Kate saying the poo-pooing of the vaccine, of the the lab leak theory over COVID didn't help. No. um, I mean, we should say it's still overwhelmingly likely it wasn't a lab leak. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, ProPublica, usually a very good outlet, has but, but, heavily walked back its reporting. But, guess, the, but people did jump to say it was a ridiculous pe- idea, people, and it wasn't. People felt reasonable questions were getting squashed, and this leads to this leads to, to radicalization. Um, I think reasonable uh, questions were getting squashed. They do have a point. What um, are there people you can point to, identifiable people who are major actors in the QAnon movement in in this country and in America? I mean, there there are all sorts. I mean, they've actually identified Q, the guy who mm-hmm. um, who founded it, uh, journalist Nicky Wolf, who yeah. I know you know. Um, identified him. Wasn't, actually, it wasn't it wasn't actually met, him. Met you should him. point out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah no, he tracked out, yeah. and it was the guy who operated the message boards yeah. who was kind but, of doing I mean, it for attention. But, but, but I mean, in I mean, the UK, are you've... there? Are there? I guess I meant more sort of like sincere figures. I mean, Pe- yes. real real believers. Um, there's there's John Mappin, who's probably the most prominent UK one, and he uh, operates a hotel out down in uh, Cornwall. Mm-hmm. I always get panic if I've got to say Devon instead. Um, but he's got the Q flag up above the hotel. Instead of a Gideon's Bible in there, you've got Q pamphlets and information if you stay there. I think he's quite sincere. You've mm-hmm. got... It's always quite hard with influencers who make money through it to know... Are they being cynical or do they believe this? I mean, you see people like Russell Brand who are at the very least Q adjacent. Who yeah. might, you know, they might not identify as signing up to it. Um, I mean, you've got people in the US Congress mm-hmm. who they slightly disavow it now, but they still say it all and they used to explicitly follow it. Lauren Babbitt, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene. You know, these they got elected. There were about 20 or 30 openly queued on supporting candidates in the last congressional so race. The move from this being a, kind of an online joke among 
among sort of message board communities, of which, you, I mean, you're right, you were basically a part at one point. Oh, absolutely. Um, the move from that into sort of sincere, if madly deluded politics is is fascinating. Talk a bit about your 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 history as a troll. So, um, so I was a teenager when the board 4chan started, and it's quite fun to derail someone else's conversation. I mean, um, I mean, you write about forgive the language, but you you write about you know being online a gay person online calling other people on the on the internet fags to get a response, yeah, right? Because yeah. I mean, it it's puerile and it's bad, but most most of the people then didn't particularly mean it. You kind of did it. It became a term of affection among people on there, mm-hmm. but you'd sometimes use it outside of there to sort of see people kick off when you knew you were using it one way and they were doing it another. But trolling is kind of about derailing a conversation. So there's a very famous one where a bodybuilding forum got completely derailed because someone managed to get about 50 users arguing over how to count days. Yes, I, I didn't I didn't realise that was deliberate. Yes, it was. <laughs> okay. but yeah, I, that's, know, I know the case. That's yeah. it as it's done. Um, there's one that they do every year which is less gentle, which is setting off people arguing about kink at Pride. Right. People set up an account as a sort of poly, they, them, mm-hmm. you know, furry avatar and say that kink shouldn't be at Pride, it needs to be family friendly, mm-hmm. which sets off older gay activists. Okay, but so, so, but so as a as a, a former youthful troll who was involved in this kind of thing, do you have a slightly guilty relationship with QAnon and the spread of things like that? Do you feel that you were part of a community that maybe led to bad consequences? Yeah, it's, it's sort of like, um, you know, having played soldiers as a kid and then discovering that someone that you did it with has committed war crimes, mm. you know? It yeah. is that sense of, oh, this this isn't a game anymore. I mean... If the thing that kind of started the seeds of QAnon was Pizzagate, yeah, uh, and that was the idea that inside Hillary Clinton's emails that WikiLeaks hacked and published, mm. there was a code, and pizza meant girl and yeah. spaghetti meant boy. That started on 4chan as a troll to see if they could get people to believe something that stupid. And it turned out they could. Very quickly. And it very quickly led to an actual pizza restaurant look, being shot up yeah, to I'm, all sorts of incredible look, harm. We're, we're very nearly out of time and we haven't even got to the meat of what I want to ask you about yet. <laughs> this is a long conversation which we're having briefly. But basically, uh, the, the, the notion at the heart of your book is the idea that this stuff spreads like a disease. The other pandemic is the information pandemic, the disinformation pandemic. Uh, and and tell me about the idea of a digital health service to, to counter that kind of thing. Because that's quite a, that's a big and, I would say, controversial idea. It's definitely controversial. I see it as the lesser of two evils. You start If you start looking at banning sites or banning speech and banning networks, that's quite draconian. Mm. And you start getting authorised ideas. I think what you have to start doing is looking at which might be dangerous and aren't grounded in truth and looking at ways to either inoculate people, sort of have have a, a foreknowledge of it so that people don't hear it cold and go, oh, this seems compelling. Uh, maybe deprioritise it in algorithms or stop it being rewarded financially. So you're not cutting off what people can say, but you're getting rid of the incentives for influencers to push dangerous misinformation. Does, does this not just lead to further conspiracy about the conspiracy to conceal the conspiracy? It probably does, <laughs> but anything does. <laughs> yeah, sure. No, look, I mean, Ed, what... Where do you think, I guess we'll have to round up in a second, but where do you think this is going to go? Is QAnon finished or just getting started? It's so capable of pulling in new ideas and new conspiracies. And you never know what's going to do it. 15-minute cities, the idea that you should have a shop, a hairdresser and a pub near your house, if that can turn into a conspiracy and get dragged in with all this new world order, anything can. So... These aren't going to go away. They will change shape. They will evolve, but they've got to keep infecting people. Oh, completely fascinating. Thank you very much indeed, James Ball. Um, and the book is The Other Pandemic. And is that it's out next week? It's out on Thursday, it's yes. Out, it's out on Thursday. Thank you very much indeed, James Ball. I'm sorry we didn't have more time. What an endless topic.